I just yeah, go ahead. I'm awesome. This is it, E.L. Fox, Marcin Jakubowski. We're here discussing marketing the actual offer to the instructors who would lead the OSC uh, STEAM camps. Now, Yale, uh, so do I have it correctly? So as far as your involvement, you actually see yourself, do you want to basically like dive into the hardware and learn it and run it and do open source product development? For sure, like all my favorite things. So like I'm pretty open for anything. I just want to get the curriculum done so that when I come, like I'm pretty good. I can I can make shit work. I can hack it together fine, but I'm not like an engineer. You know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, it's about... I I, I, yeah, yeah, like if... I'll, I'll tell you, like, so I've actually been putting together a little bit of a... It's just so coincidental. Like I wanted to put it's, it's 10 chapters on Raspberry Pi and you go from knowing nothing to knowing the hardware at a pretty decent level like there's not that many hardware parts and the software like all the main commands that you need to know in linux it's going to be the it's like the 80 20 rule 20 yeah, percent of the command yeah i like 80%. it so i want to actually pull up what those are but do it like properly not like the most not like the top 50 ones i want to actually see what are the most common ones um then they make a project and it and it has to work so I have a couple that are right now. Um, one is that QR pie. You saw that one, right? Here, I'll share my screen with you. Yeah, show me. Because um, ideally, like, you know, like all those, here, I'll show you what I got too. Have you seen these kits? No, I haven't. So it's an LCD and every component, and then tons of just different kinds of modules. Now these are fun. What, who did that? Uh, that's called Elecro. E L E C R O W. I think they're from China. Here, E L C. It's called the Crow Pie, and it's for it's for learning. Um, they got they raised oh. off Kickstarter. It's a cool company to know. It's a great kit, by the way. Like, it, it, it seriously is. So, are you at Crowpie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm looking at it on the like, line. I, it's like, yeah, it looks pretty cool, man. Um, so, so, like, even with these, I can show people how all these work. Like, at the, you know, pretty much at the, you know, at the sensor and transistor level. That's fine. But I want them to make something that's cool. You know what I mean? Not uh -huh. like, hey, here's a button, you push it and it lights up an LED. So here's I'll show you what I got. Um I'm gonna share Did my I actually screen. get Mark Zuckerberg uh commenting on it? Yeah. We can and there's ways to uh, okay, hold on. This is number one. Oh, in the wrong one. I think they pulled out Mark Zuckerberg and Jack Ma. Not, I don't know, did they actually contact them regarding it? They, th those sound like general comments. It could be, but here, anyway. let me, uh, I, can, I know really how to get cool. to those people. Once there's a structure, I can get us, like, I've done sponsorship forever, but, like, here, here's one thing that I made. Can you see this? Guest wireless network? O open source guest Wi-Fi network. So it starts, okay, you take the pot, the pie. You Is this your website? Software. It's not online yet. It will be in the next little bit. Um, but you can actually, here, it might be online right now, actually. Yeah, I think I left it online. So just go to my GitHub at slash Gail Fox. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, you, did, you did that graphic there of the dog? Like, uh, the dog, you like Fox? that? Yeah. How'd you do that? I don't know. I don't know how it happened, man. It's like, you know, when people see, like, Jesus in, uh... <laughs> like, uh How'd you hack that, man? Right? There's a, so you just, look, dude, I, like, I just cleaned, like, I, uh, I fixed the, the Git file. But, um, you can make it say pretty much whatever you want. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, this one's good. Um, <laughs> it's like here GTFO it's or something. <laughs> you, there's so much funny shit you can do with it. Um, but yeah. this is, no, this, this is, is, 
so this is like what you build at the end. Yeah. So this is like a three and a half inch screen, yeah. which is probably a hundred bucks per person. And then if you want to get a like this kit, here, I'll show you after, but. No, I, this I is like, okay, so this, uh, what do you call it, crow pie, man, that's like exactly what we want. Now this is one element with a pie, but we're talking about the whole deal for robotics and microfabrication, you know? So that's, you know, the yeah. flavor? Yes, power packed, like integrated, crazy, right? So, oh, okay, I'm pulling it up here, so we're both on the same. What, like, I, I wanted to make our own crow pie at one point, and I saw this, and I was like, there's things I like, there's things I don't like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll show you. Um, do you know Pure OS? I've heard of it, yeah. That's for that's for cell phones? Uh, Pure OS is, uh, it's, it's a version of Linux, it's Debian based. What do you use, Ubuntu? Ubuntu, yeah. Um, hold on. Pure OS. Purism. So check these out. I fucking want one so bad, but I, they didn't get the best. They, so see this? Can you see yeah, this? Yeah, I know Librem, yeah. I talked to Jeff so, Moe's like all over this stuff. Jeff Moe, the CEO of Lulzbot. I talked to him anyways, once in a while. So the whole thing is with the crow pie though, like here, let me pull it up. Crow pie. Though. Yeah. Like what you're to build, you can learn stuff, but it's not going to be that useful. Like again, they're they're throwing everything. They're throwing everything at you. Like I'd rather come up and say like, here, this is something we're going to build. And actually build it, and everyone can bring it home and use it, and and, and add to it. You know what I mean? Uh, and this is not it. You're saying? This, could, I mean, look, this is a. It's 219 bucks, which makes it a pretty good price for a kit. We could definitely build off them. Um, it saves a lot of hassle for sure. Like you, you don't have to do any soldering or anything like that. Yeah. So, yeah these, are, but like, you know, like these are. Um, what's it? I mean, this comes with the RFID. It comes with everything, but you, no one's going to use it. Like, I have all the tri all the modules sitting, like, in a box. Yeah. There's just nothing. So, like, it's kind of a waste. I was trying to think, like, to build this exact thing, but a computer, yeah. like a Pi, and, to, and it's a Libra notebook, but this size. You could do you could do pure OS on Pi? Pi? First of all, the new Pi 4, have you played with it? No. It's like it's faster than most people's computers. Really? It's pretty. It's pretty impressive. And there's new ones that are coming out that are like. Are you, are you saying that, uh, like you can run? It's fast like a modern cell phone. Like if you want just basic applications like keyboard and. Um, oh yeah. Like modern cell wiki. Phone for sure. Dude, not can with the, not, not with the GPU, but everything else. Like, can you? Um, Man, you know what the ideal thing would be? Like, if I could also put a phone on that, man, that well, would be... Listen, like, I would get rid so of my phone right now, and I would just carry that thing around and put okay, put a big that? suitcase next to my head. Well, dude, I was like... I was thinking of building something like that. That's a laptop that's totally open source that has a space for a SIM cord, a SIM card, that you could buy. Or you can either you buy it or you build it. Um, that kind of deal. So, do you know how to do yeah, that? Having, Can you pull that off? Like we we just add a SIM card and turn it into a f real phone. With this with this Pi Pro, like you just need a look up Pi SIM module or Pi SIM Pi. You're saying it's easy. Pi we got it in a bag. Here's Pi any Pi anywhere dot com, 4G and GPS for the Pi, and. It's a tiny little, it, look, you can see where it plugs in. There you go. This thing, all, all in, it's going to be a ton of shit. But yeah, I think, like, one of the coolest things of... Mobile data and GPS doesn't have phone? Mobile data, oh, like, uh, for, for voice? I would, I think it's, isn't, isn't voice over data now? Well... That's that works if you got data, but in places where it's just like you need, you know, there's no data, but there's phone. Well, there's a Raspberry Pi based cell phone on Adafruit. It looks super cool too. Oh, let me see that. Can you share your screen? Yeah, hold on. Well, 
What speed internet do you got at your house? What, one gigabit. How come on a screen like you, sh you're not crystal clear? Like I see myself crystal clear, but you're not. Oh, just because it compresses the image like crazy. Okay. You're streaming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw this one, and that's like, that's cool. But it's like I want a thing that would replace this. Like, you know, I'm, I wake up, I do my meditation, I do some editing of the wiki and stuff. So more than a phone, because if I got, I want to combine the phone and a basic mobile device. So yeah, the thing on, um, I, I saw the Adafruit thing, that's cool, but it's like, have you been, I wouldn't use have you been it. Here? Hmm? Have, like, have you been here? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm all over this. I love yeah. these guys. Yeah. I'm there, they're doing sim jack right now. That's the latest, the that look, the latest on Pi Phone, are, I don't know if you're following it, but there's Zero Phone or Pi Phone or Zero Phone. Let's see. Zero Phone? Oh, have you seen, have you seen the Mesh Phone? No. No. Hold on. Not Zero, no, it's Zero Phone, maybe. Yeah, 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 the Zero Phone, but it's not a smartphone kind of thing with a screen like. <laughs> we want the screen. Okay. So, what do you think? We could, um, well, this would definitely meet the, the idea of the Raspberry Pi tablet thing. So, it sounds like you could be the perfect guy for that. Now, I've got one, I, one extra requirement. Sure. One extra requirement. I talked to uh, Jason Kridner of BeagleBone. So, what do you think about BeagleBone? I've never used it, but I think it's really cool. It's well, he told me it's like, it? dude, if you design your Pi phone... Just make it such that, as simple that you can simply plug in a BeagleBone instead of the Pi. Because, like, if you have HDMI and the USB, like, let's try to do that in there. And, like, I because, you know, BeagleBone is open source design, whereas Pi is not. In other words, BeagleBone actually shows you the schematics of the circuits and everything. You can build one if, if they go out of business. Yeah. So Pi is like that too, by the way. But what, who's the guy that you spoke to? Is he from BeagleBone? Yeah, he's the founder of BeagleBone, Jason Kridner. Uh, here, what's BeagleBone? What's their OS called? BeagleBoard? I don't know. Never, I never Beagle, use... BeagleBone, I mean, does he... Oh, cool. It's probably better. Like, Raspberry Pi is, is specific. It's for everybody. It's for the masses. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Right. The BeagleBone is harder. It's harder. They they use it on, for example, like all the satellites that take imaging of the Earth right now. They're Beagle Bones. Actually, I was surprised. Okay. He's got. He's like crazy. He's he sells about four hundred thousand a year versus like four million for Pi. Okay. So they're still both look. Um, yeah. And they call them keys. I never really. I just want to know if it. So some of these, like an Arduino. Do you use Arduino? Yeah. Is that all C-based and C plus? Yeah. You can't use Python because I don't know C at all. Um, I don't and, know how well you can use Python. Throwing someone, into a, have camp, to... throwing, someone into a, throwing someone into a camp to learn C is very different than Python. But this looks awesome. This is, I mean, yeah, and BeagleBone AI is coming out. So we talked about the AI drones that do the planting of the aquaponic towers. Like that'll be the an evolution of the project. I'm gonna order one right now. Hot dog. It looks pretty cool. I want to just see what they got, and then I'll play with it right away. We actually have a beagle bone because laser saw, the open source laser cutter that we have here, that uses beagle bone black. Oh, you know. Okay, I got you. And it's I'm got a cell phone again. interface, but we actually never got the laser saw here up and running fully. We've got it just sitting. Management issues, you know. Yeah. Because <laughs> so some people can go without people. operations for an entire decade. <laughs> I think the pie is going to be better for everybody for a camp yeah. to get started. Yeah. Like, these are for new people, right? It's true, it's true. Yeah. It's like, you know what, but like, we can talk about the Beagle Bone after and even yeah. talk about our, you know, and stuff. Yeah. It's like, so one of my friends works on the, um, on the actual software for the for uh, U.S. Navy for the the satellites that are up there, the same satellites have been up there for like 50, 60 years. They're super resilient, and uh, they haven't had to be changed or updated. This is really cool too, by the way, the Tinkerboard. 
Is it Intel? Hold on. Tinkerboard? Yeah, check this one out. They've been, they, I would have bought them before. They're always sold out. Ipex. Is that open source or? Not sure. Hmm. Yeah, no, I, have, I was, haven't heard of this one. Asus Tinkerboard. Because, uh, I was looking for one that was Intel based. How come? I'll show you. There's a piece of software. Um, This one, can you see this? Yeah. It, so it's Sophos Firewall software. And it's, uh, if you build, you need a, a dual NIC, so two, um, two uh, Ethernets, and you can build a really good firewall appliance, but it's Intel based. And I, I don't want to put it on a whole Intel thing. Uh, why are you talking about firewall appliances? Just because, like, to have someone build something that's useful, you know what I mean? Uh huh. Like, to, to, to turn on a bunch of LEDs and stuff isn't. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. more fun if they, they leave with something that they can, uh, like, well, so this, so with, you know, I'll, I'll tell you the skip that, or the, from front to back, here's what, um, here's what we have. I have one thing called, uh, okay, so it takes you from Raspberry Pi from nothing, so you build a, an app that works on Pi, you learn to work with screens, you learn uh, Pi Hard, which is like a, a script that tightens up all the security on your Pi. I can talk about that. Um, and uh, you build an Alexa skill. So you, I can ask my Alexa to tell me the Wi-Fi, and a big QR code appears on screen. If you scan it on your phone, it, it adds you to your network. So there's some utility in it. One other thing I was going to do is, you know when you go to coffee shops and you get like the free internet, but they steal all your data? Yeah. So you can do that completely for free, like no data, so like a privacy-centric coffee shop thing. Uh, that but anyway, you mean you set it up at a coffee shop and it gets you that firewall? Well, I was gonna build. Um, let me see where. Let me see if I have. So yeah, like this isn't powered on, but it just looks like this, right? Yeah. The pie's in the back. Yeah. Pops off. You just put you plug this into your coffee shop. It creates a wireless access point that anyone can connect to that comes in the coffee shop, but they're not stealing your data, and it's, it's free. Cool. Uh, what kind of data do they steal? They don't, like, do that. Nothing. It's just people are so uptight about per, um, personal information and, and, and shit like that these days. You know what I mean? I don't care, personally. Um, other stuff we could do... Uh, Probably not the right one. And like penetration testing. Do you know Evil Twin? Evil Twin? Yeah. Oh, look at this. It's like the oldest trick in the book. Can you see? Evil Twin, what this basically does is you copy someone's SSID, and when they connect to it, it can break the password right away, and then you're in on their Wi-Fi. So it makes a twin network. <laughs> How funny is it? It makes a twin network, and uh, holy shit! Anybody who connects to it is like they're sending you like it, all, all that you need to get through. There's also one. Um, <laughs> you can do that. You can poach somebody's internet connection just like that. Like here, like I'm hoping. Listen, dude. So my fucking neighbor is the. Oh, never mind. We're on, we're, we're, on, we're on the public, man. <laughs> but, yeah, so this, uh, this kind of technology exists, and you're into that. It, I mean, not only to know, I mean, that's not really, like, my cup of tea, per se, but, like, 
the, learning how, how these things work give you idea like hacking has a negative connotation for it, but you can, everything positive is hacked too. And you yeah, know, what I, I know I, I don't want to tell you that, but I get the best ideas from seeing how they come up with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's fucking brilliant. They, yeah, and that you can copy the hack idea. It's like wow, like we really have zero security. If no one wants to get in, you can't do anything. I can't really. I don't know how I could change my. I could hide my network ID. I could randomize it, but it's really uh yeah. Anyways, <laughs> so these guys, these guys took a a Wi-Fi sniffer and tied it to their cat. Did you ever see this? And sent the cat go in the neighborhood. <laughs> Let me buy this for you. Here. We wouldn't watch be getting after. off track, would we? Yeah, maybe a little. Anyways, watch that after. This is the war kitty. And they have a denial of service dog, so... <laughs> <laughs> you, okay. Dude, I'm going to death next year, by so the way. You should, you should come to that. We have been. weaponizing your pets. Haven't been. The war kitty and the... <laughs> My friend <laughs> Anne just said, she said, it's, she said it's like Ted, but it's all hackers. She's a biohacker. Um, she said it's the, it's the best thing she's ever been to. She's going again. It's, it's like, uh, anyways, when it's coming around again, I'll... I'll when is it? We just missed it, so... Okay. No, DEF CON is in my radar. To, I got to go there sometime. So, okay, so here. So what... Um, let me just... I'm going to pull up a... So what what you need help with? So you need recruiting, right? We need to find a team, man. Look at... Did you look at the... Let me show you this link here. Look at the link. Look what we got. Oh, and this one, hold on. That's all we it's got. So, so the second page shows the task breakdown. So I'm going to put you, Yale. Uh, would you say that... I mean, yeah, let's run with the Pi tablet. So where's Yale? Start Yale is Pi there. If it changes, that's fine. Uh, do we have the Pi tablet here? Where is it? I'm on the far right. I see that. Um, well, I don't think we even have... Let's see what we got. Wire. This is cordless welder, motor CNC, C-mill, 3D printer, circuit plotter, Arduino, drone. We don't even have the, the Pi tablet. So we have the drone here, but we don't got anybody on the drone yet. So let's, um, let's put you next to a Pi tablet, yeah? You yeah, can edit that. A, yeah? So what, what is this diagram? These are where people are going? This diagram is a breakdown of the nine-day curriculum into small parts. If we're going to build the so printer... Yeah, has, huh? Okay. I want to help with, um, with, with changing how it's structured a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, this is just, just a visually. breakdown. Yeah. No, I mean, copy a page and start editing, man. This is all open. Um, like the first I'm gonna, diagram, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm yeah. Gonna, I'm gonna pull it offline right now. Yeah. No, work online, man. Start. I want to see what you're doing. I need to use a uh, sketch. Sketch? Do you, do you sketch? It's well, it's design software. I can do things in like. Oh, okay. Less than half the time. Sketch, open source I, sketch. It's not open source, but it's so good. Like, mm. Oh, I see. Um, here, you know what? Actually, let me. I'm gonna call you back in in five minutes. I just have to do one thing quickly. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'll call into this thing. Give me one sec. Yeah.
Ladies and gentlemen, we're waiting for Yale to rejoin here. You might want to skip this if you don't want to do this. I'm working on um, Steam Camp, how it works right now. Uh, so there's main, you can look at it on the wiki, Steam Camp, how it works. Uh, so putting the explicit points from before. So. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so here, I can I can work online. I'll show you what, what I want to do, though. Oh, uh, do you ever use Inkscape for, instead of Sketch? No, I'll check that. Inkscape. Do you know Inkscape? A Apescape? Ink, I-N-K. I'm looking at that now. Dude, that's, that's open source, man. It's... Go to it. I'll try it, but... Try it. Uh, it might have a learning curve. I don't know. I, I don't use it a lot. I use GIMP and Inkscape. That's in, uh, it's in our system. But if we do use it, like if... You know the deal, like, nobody's going to have Sketch. So if we're teaching stuff like you're teaching right now, you'd have to use Inkscape during the camp. For sure. But, um, yeah. but for... Uh... And is this all like confirmed it or are you just getting the team up first? No, I'm getting the team. Well, the people with the names, yes, those are people that are committing to those items. Now, I'm not sure how clear people are what that exactly means. So as soon as we get, I want to do a couple more days on getting people together and hold a meeting where we get clear about, okay, duties, responsibilities, what exactly are we doing here? Because I don't think that's really clear. Uh, but this is part of it. Like we got a really, like a present, last time we talked about a presentation, let's do a pitch, pitch. A slide deck for the presenters, for the instructors to find them. Okay, yeah. So that that's um, what I was gonna do. Hold on. How do I share? What's your uh, what account do I share with? Marchin at opensourceecology.org. Oh, I'm talking to Steve at at 1 p.m. today. It's so it's cool. Steve Etsley? Yeah. Tell him I say hi. Yeah. He's awesome. Yeah. Okay, share. Um, policy, uh, um, organization. Okay, so I just shared this with you, and I'll show you what I would want to do kind of first. Uh-huh. Here. I'm just going to share screen. You can see all this? Yeah. So... Okay, I, I want to just put, I want to start a universal controller, universal axis, 3D printer, circuit plotter, CNC mill, Arduino Uno, 3D printed motor. Yeah, the Uno we make from scratch using the Sorry? plotter. Yeah, we make the Uno from scratch using the plotter. So the machines are used to produce a lot of those things, like 3D printed motor, etc. For, for sure, but this diagram is going to confuse people. Yeah, yeah. 
You know what I mean? So we yeah. can say we can still say that, but we want to, so what is a universal controller? Just tell me. It's a controller that can handle running the three D printer, welder, all the machines, plus any power electronic device like the cordless welder. Um, so it can't. Here, what's uh? You click, can't. Uh, yeah. It's a control screen with a microprocessor. It's a LCD, kind of like what you showed me on that that Pi. So it has an LCD it? interface. Like what would I? Oh, board. And it has like motor you? motor controllers. So it's a universal CNC controller, plus other power electronic devices that you know, pending addition of some power circuits, you can control things so like the cordless you, welder or the electric motor. Called, I, I need to see a link of what it's called though. See, universal CNC controller? Yeah, let me uh, get you a link for um, open source. Yeah, yeah, I got to use my screen too. But okay, so, um, so um, in the chat, I'm pasting the all the links. It's called open source prior art. So th that link, the first link there is the universal controller. So you can look up all the components that we have so far. So, um, yeah, I mean, I want to put these all on a piece of paper and say what they all do and then yep. classify them and then like, you know, it's like, oh, you sent it in the chat. Okay. Yeah. So open source prior art, click the first link there. That's the universal controller. It's a thing that, that snaps. Thing in the picture. It. Yeah. There's a picture there up on a universal controller page. It snaps into a, a frame. It's on a, 3D printed backing with with all mount holes already 3D printed, and you can control anything with it, up to an induction furnace. Pending some, you know, you add some power electronics on top of the microcontroller. Okay, hold on. So a universal controller, not the one that we're necessarily even making, but just in general. Yeah. Is a computer that controls any piece of hardware. Is that right? It's a microprocessor that controls hardware, CNC machines. What's You're more general, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, a microprocessor. So, so we're just using an Arduino there, as opposed to. Uh, why, why isn't a microprocessor like that a computer? It is. It's just a different name. Sorry, I don't understand your question. What's the difference between, I'm just looking at microprocessor, the main point is that computers are larger seen, whereas a microprocessor is a small chip. Computers. Uh, um, I'm going to call it, I want to make this so that we can get someone yeah. that doesn't know any, so here, I'm going to actually, here's what I'm going to do, I'm going to put two definitions. Can you, oh, here. Yeah, you see the box in green, are you reading that? Um, we're gonna call that yeah. Look at the minute. box in green. Go scroll to the top of that page, and there's a box in green that that kind of just gives it the description. So top scroll. Of this page? No, on the page on the right side. The wiki page. Yeah, the green box kind of describes it. But you, so here's a list of all the things it can control. You said basically anything up to a furnace. Yeah, if you if you use a microcontroller with a proper software to run power elements, you can control an induction furnace, for example. So, so can, can it control, control anything? anything? Yeah, it's a universal controller. God damn it! Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I just, yeah. Is it based on a, like? So I don't know a lot about this part of things, but I want to put this into two documents. One is for technical. And it's how we're going to get technical people, and one is for normal, which is how we're going to get normal people who want to just learn how to be it, right? So here, what's a universal access? Is this on here too? Yeah, go back to go back one. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's a CNC axis, made of like ten parts, and you can build machines with CNC machines with it. And it comes What's in this? bigger forms like one inch and even two inch, where the two one or two inch refers to the rods that are used in there. This thing here, this is the the axis. That's one inch, yeah. But the picture above is the axis. Yeah, these are all examples of the axis. It's a linear ac motion axis. 
this is called a so this is a universal access. It's a motion and access. It's a it, means it can only go forwards and backwards, right? Yeah. So is the only thing where you, so is it really a linear universal access? It is. It is a linear universal access. And uh, so you would mount something on this. Mount uh, a device mount. And so what do you it's for like a this is for a 3D printer but what else? CNC circuit mill, torch table, heavy duty CNC mill, laser cutter. It's a universal system for building in motion into. So okay, so it's a it's um, system that creates guided motion for 3D printing, laser cutting, etching, uh -huh. stuff like that. Yep. Is that right? Right. Okay. And it's in itself 3D printed for the geometrical parts. Three D printed from the what? What kind of printer? What kind of printer? Um, plastic printer. It's in plastic. Is it a brand name or anything? Like three D printed from what? You know what I mean? No, I mean, this is our design. We did that. We designed it, and it's open source. It's You can print it on any printer. So do you have a name for it? For what? For the, the our printer? Is this yours? It is. It's this is the, the D3D, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So is our, okay, so 3D printed on the D3D. What about the universal controller? Where do we get that? Uh, you buy the electronic components off the shelf and you put them on a backboard that's 3D printed with all the proper holes for mounting everything. And a backboard's made of what? Plastic, plastic or something? Plastic. It's 3D printed, yeah. I'll show you what I'm doing with this after. Hold on. Yeah. Okay, now the 3D printer, everybody kind of knows what this is, but let me just see how you Type of... Machine capable of printing on X, Y, and Z axis through an extruder using various materials. Okay. Where'd you get that? I just that's the one that I sort of know a little bit. Yeah. But you use an extruder though, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, and so how do you, what do you use to make this? So how did you make the 3D printer? We designed it and we printed it on another 3D printer. Okay. You use a metal frame, so it's got a universal frame like the metal frames we make. Then you 3D print the universal axis and you build the controller on it. Typically buy the extruder off the shelf. In this case, we're going to build our own. Uh, I, got a, I got a person on it. On um, the little extruder, simple extruder. Where's word wrap? I don't use a... Yeah, it's, it's that. It's the one next to the slanted A. Sl yeah, there. And then alignment is this top? Sweet. Alignment. Okay. Yeah. I actually want to do that everywhere. Okay. Um, so 3D printer was um, designed by other open source um, and printed on another machine. What's a circuit plotter do? It draws circuits. Um, no, go back. Okay, yeah, there. Oh, cool. Is That's that, the is that it? Yeah. So you plot. Does it draw the? It draws a, the pattern, and then you etch it using, etchant. So it draws a pattern on a on a copper clad board, that re represents the circuit. 
But this is also a generalized plotter. If you put a regular pen, you can draw pictures with it. So it draws the the circuit plotter draws it with a with the pen or something else. Yeah, with a marker, with a sharpie, and that serves as the mask for the etching. Where um, is, is the CNC mill the etching? No, the CNC mill is milling a physical material. Um, what do you etch with? The the CNC mill. How do you how do you etch it after? Do you have an etcher? Do I have a what? How do you etch it after you've drawn the? Oh yeah, off? etch it. It's a solution of a recyclable. Um, yeah, dude, uh, look at, uh, once again, go back to that document with the open source prior art. All the links are there, so you don't have to search it. There. So, um, Universal Access, uh, Circuit Mill, where's the plotter? Circuit Plotter. Um, yeah, the link to the Circuit Plotter, you just saw it, but there's a way... Oh, I saw it. Environmentally friendly. Engine. Yeah, yeah, there. Upper Chloride. I want to put that on here. That's from Hackaday. And what do you do with that? You just put it on? Uh, you, you submerge the thing, the circuit in the bath, and then it etches it away after like two minutes. Cool. Is it toxic? Um, it's recyclable. I don't think it's, I'm not sure how toxic it is, but it's fully recycled. You reuse it over and over. Copper chloride. I don't think it's too toxic. Not, not particularly. CNC uh, mill is, a, it, it works on an X and Y axis, right? Yeah. To, to do anything? Yeah. Uh, okay. In the prior art, uh, do the D3D CNC circuit mill link, which is the fourth link. That's what we built. Go to the prior art, yeah, the fourth link there, D3D CNC circuit mill. That's what we built. Oh, that's the 3D, so but go, go down, go down, you can see real pictures. Now go down the page, that's that's what it looks like, and there's CAD and everything. This, this one, right? Yeah, like you can add, okay. you can mill stuff. For us, it would be more like... We're doing a, we don't want to do the milling like this because I think it's easier to do the, the etchant. It's a simpler thing. This would be used for like, if you want to make mill small parts in aluminum. Okay. So here, what I was going to do though is I'm going to take all these and put them in here. Yeah. Because it's going to be, to be used for marketing material at the end of the day. And I'm going yeah. to define all of them technically and all of them in layman's and then see where it's constructed. Then I want to change how this diagram looks so people can understand the curriculum and what they're going to do on day one and day two. So maybe on day one, you build the 3D printer. Once that's done, you can build the 3D printed motor, right? Right. And actually walk them, walk them through like what nine days of this camp looks like. And I think it'll be in a, in a really clear and easy to understand interface. Um, so I can, I'm going to start working on that pretty much now in between like calls and things like that. Uh, and I'll, I'll ping you if I have any questions. But yeah. I think it's and really important to nail down what the camp is the product. I think it's really important to nail down what the product is in a in a clear and concise and understandable way. That, that is right. Because you know, eventually when you're going out to, to, to raise money and everything like that, people, um, they need it so simple. Or, or they, you know. Well, this is to get the, get the instructors. But the other thing is how do we get, you know, it's taken a bit of time to get these instructors like could use some some help on that like get money to find like get professional recruiting happening here but i kind of got to vet the people you know for the culture so someone's got to do the vetting uh, but take a look at the link that i just sent in the chat box the last link and that that breaks the day one through nine so that's below okay. the, the infographic there uh below the diagram so it's only yeah, so scroll Day down. One and the oh, I got gotcha. you. So each thing that's circled is another one. 
Uh, I'm referring to. No, look. There's only four spots. There's day one, two, three, four. That. Okay, yeah, and five. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. So that's how I was thinking. Like I'm talking down to the hour. Like this is tight. And of course we can improve it, but this is the the first cut. That unless there's a reason we you know we don't change it. Okay. Let me start to. I want to wrap my head around all this stuff. Um, and it, it's gonna take me a couple days for sure. Um, but I want to know how everything works and how it all fits in. And uh, and I'll get you a a deck that can, that can be used. Yeah. Sound good. Yeah, that sounds great. What time? What time are you talking to Steve? One. About one. Okay. Um, I can take an hour. You want to join? Oh, you're trying, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, we will. Let's chat over signal. And um, but yeah, I'm gonna get cracking on all this stuff. So. Okay. All right, dude. Thanks. I'll talk to you soon. Yep. Talk soon. Bye. Right. See you, man.